Hello everybody and welcome. My name is James with First Updates Now, checking in with Team 6081, the digital dislocators from Manchester, Michigan, here at the First in Michigan Kelvin University event. Here with me, I have Joseph, Bodie, Logan, and Curtis to talk more about this awesome robot. Great handoff mechanism here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, analysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. To start us off today, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our intake. Our original intake concept, we built it. It consisted out of uh, original 2x1 uh, aluminum box tube sprocket driven by a Neo 550 12 to 1 ratio, but we found that was really heavy and we were already exceeding weight limit, so we decided pretty recently to change over to a polycarbon intake design with a peanut brace across. We also changed the Neo 550 down to a Neo 1 to 1 direct uh, sprocket drive. Uh, the actuation of our intake is belt driven internally in our robot. We keep a bag motor sprocket driven to the steel axle which is actually the pivot point for our lift mechanism so it rides these uh sprockets up and down the intake and pulls itself in and out if you'd like to demonstrate that yep. body just we'll watch out a little bit and then we use that primarily i can put a tube in primarily for tubes during autonomous and partially a teleop contributes to our fast cycle time and we can uh, this just helps us a whole lot when it comes to autonomous and scoring quickly. I think at this point, I'm gonna hand it off to Bodhi to talk about the claw and the lift mechanisms. Alrighty, so now we're gonna continue on our cargo path onto the claw. So we use just a, a standard gripper claw with these two pneumatic wheel or compliant wheels that spin freely that allow us to uh, basically auto orient the cones to where we want them to go. Um, it is just a simple operation like that on pneumatics. Um, and now kind of moving into our elevator. It is a Drifty Bot elevator kit, uh, two stage. We're running this on two Neos with five to one gearboxes on each. And this thing is ridiculously fast. It's kind of what we designed it for. But uh, just demonstrating that real quick on the, uh, the high preset, it goes up there really, really fast. And then coming back and then we drop just like that. And coming back down is also very, very fast, as you can see. And so basically to support all of this craziness that we have on top, we're running a Sword Drive Specialties MK4i drive base on Neos. These are level twos. We've had great luck with them. And now to pass off to Logan to talk a little about how we program this monstrosity. <laughs> monstrosity, all right. So as Bodie mentioned, this is our first year swerve. So it's been quite an adventure with programming. So um, this year it's also our first year using path planning. We're using path planner and um, it's been quite an adventure getting it lots of trial and error. And um, I'd like to thank our friends at Chelsea, um, Team 1502, for allowing us to use their space. They set up a full field, or I guess sort of half field this year, but they allow our team. So our friends at 1502, we really appreciate your, your graciousness. And um, so, um, it's had a little bit of issues with like lining up to so trial and error. I've been taking um, videos of all our autos and just adjusting. Um, we've also had pretty good luck. Our very robust and consistent um, auto charge station balance. And uh, like a lot of teams using PID, we're keeping it simple. It just, once it's on, it drives up at a pretty slow speed. It's like seven centimeters per second or something. And once it hits, um, a certain tolerance once it's within a certain range it just stops and that's worked every single time it's been really efficient we also have um as Bodhi sort of demonstrated with presets on the lift um and so the that helps a lot with driving as well um oh yeah and in addition when we use the um the intake when our, our driver joe uses um the intake it will 
match the speed of the um, the drive base. So it base it will speed up uh, or slow down when he goes faster forward. And it'll speed up when he goes backward, and that that's been a huge help with um, having making sure the the cubes get exactly here every single time. And um, I think that's about it for that. I'm gonna pass it off to uh, Curtis now to talk about vision and some of our future plans. Okay, currently we do not have any vision systems on this robot due to weight issues. Um, but when we do, we're gonna mount a limelight under this piece of plexi here that will take care of April tag and reflective tape. Uh, and we're gonna implement that with a sort of auto aim thing where it centers the robot on the scoring position. So it'll be even more automated to go with the uh, presets. Uh, our other vision system will be a oh, fisheye camera God. mounted up here on the uh, air tank rack. And that will be able to see basically all, everything in front of our robot and inside of our robot. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to 6081 for taking the time to talk to us today. They're doing a great job at Kelvin University and we can't wait to see how they do the rest of the season. Thank you for watching Behind the Bumpers and have a great rest of your day. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.